Hey guys, I'm Dave Dunstair, Sweetwater Sales Engineer, here with Mike Martin from All That Remains. Mike, welcome. Hi. Super stoked to talk about your uh, guitar rig today uh, and get into what you're using on tour. Yeah, first time here. This is exciting. <laughs> this place is amazing. Yeah, it's a big place. Yeah, so let's get into your guitar a little bit. I mean, first of all, probably one of the most beautiful PRS finishes that I've seen in person. Talk a little bit about the build. Yeah, so Custom 24. Uh, just There wasn't a ton of stuff that had to be done. I was playing Custom 24s for a while that they just had. So it was just basically like... At first, it was literally just like a color thing for me. And then it was just like, all right, well, how much can I do to tweak it? And there wasn't really much. I mean, the neck was perfect for me. Um, eventually, I'm probably going to move this toggle switch, thanks to uh, Jason Richardson over here, because he changed my mind on that one. But other than that, it was just like, can I get a stop tail bridge? Because I hate tremolos. I always have. <laughs> and uh, can I get some kind of active pickup in it, which I've been with EMG forever. So which there model? wasn't a ton of tweaks. It was basically just like, they, they typically have the mahogany body and you want flame maple or quilted maple. But it's evolved over the years. So like each, I order two at a time. So each two kind of get more and more like, I just try to like push my luck with like the specs and see if I can get fancier and fancier. So this is my most recent and I, uh, yeah, I kind of just can't stop looking at it. So this, this had to come on tour. Funny enough, you can also actually order a custom PRS here at Sweetwater Sound by contacting one of your Sweetwater sales engineers. It's a pretty easy process, and PRS has an incredible library of different woods and finishes. What model EMGs are you using with those? We've got an 81 and a, a 66 in the neck, which is really cool. It's got the, the coil split, so you get that better clean tone. A lot of times with active pickups, you know, you get that dirt with the cleans and stuff, but these are the best I've heard for these, you know, and since I've been with EMG in 2004 or something like that. So yeah, it's pretty cool. You got the coil split. So I 81 and 85 was mine forever, but the 66 is more recent. So it works good with like, you know, the ballad type songs and stuff like that. Absolutely. But uh, I, do, I do have to give credit to my friend Brian. He owns Brian's Guitars in Connecticut and he invented this finish. It's called Sub-Zero Glow Smoke Burst. <laughs> so this is actually not a PRS color. It was he like made this color up and I, I text him one day and I was like, dude, if I put it in an order, can I steal that color? And he was like, yeah, go ahead. So I just, I just wanted to ask permission. So this color is not, you don't see this color too, too much. People are starting to rip it off more and more now, but there's probably only a handful of them right now. So that's why I think this guitar is extra special. Absolutely. Yeah, I think with PRS especially, like their finish work is unparalleled. And you've, you've been a PRS player for a very long time. Yeah, like, since I mean, 2009. Oh my gosh. What is, like, how many PRSs do you have currently in your rig? Like, you know, are you usually swapping out between a couple different, couple different models? Well, the, tu the touring typically, I have I, this, I have a charcoal cherry burst, like a flame top that's been my number one since 2015, just because I know I'm not going to have any problems with it. And it's uh, typically the same thing besides flame maple. There's an 81 and an 85 in it. Everything else is mostly the same. Um, but I have, you know... If you're counting acoustics or Silver Skies or the little A20 acoustics and stuff like, you know, I have 14 or 15 PRSs, but I, eight of them, eight of them are custom made for me. They got the they got the name on the back of the headstock, which, oh, Eddie, you didn't put my truss rod cover back on. <laughs> <laughs> it's exposed. I have a pretty cool truss rod cover with my initials on it, which Eddie didn't put back on, but that's okay. <laughs> <Still>. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, fir the first time I ever got a guitar and they put Paul signed the back and put like my name and date on the back, I thought that was like, when I used to see other signature models like that, I was like, oh, that'd be cool. And I didn't know they were going to do that. So the first time I ever saw the writing on the back, I was like a little kid. I was really excited. <laughs> That's, I mean, especially with PRS, like one of the cool things is the neck feel is so different and you have a, a, a scale length that's very uncommon between any other manufacturer. Like with all the guitars you play, like what's some of the things you notice is about PRS and how they differ? I, I don't really understand what it is at this point besides comfort because I love a lot of guitar brands. And I have, I know if you've, if you've seen Instagram, I have a lot. It's not like I'm just like, I only play one thing and I, you know, I hate everything else. I love a lot of other kinds of guitars, but there's something about like, I can have a guitar blow me away. And then for some reason, once I put it down and kind of just go back to this, I'm just like, ah. I don't know. It's just like I'm so just like adjusted to these guitars at this point. So no matter how awesome something new is to me, it's just a comfort thing at this point. I mean, the neck, the fret work in the neck is probably the thing that just my hands just like, yeah, that's exactly what I want. This feels like home. Yeah. That's awesome. 
you know, like getting into the rest of your rig, I mean, especially, you know, something that's important, like what kind of picks do you use to hold down like such intricate and heavy rhythms during the set? Uh, just Dun I've been with Dunlop forever, just Dunlop 1.0, nothing overly fancy. I got my kindergarten signature on there. I have a terrible autograph, <laughs> anyone, uh, if you want to zoom in on that. <laughs> A lot, of, a lot of people don't believe this is actually me signing things because my signature is so terrible, but that's kind of the signature of it. You know? I, I, have this, <laughs> I have the same handwriting problem. Um, have you ever like experimented between like like thickness and like shape and kind of just gone back to that? Yeah, I mean, I was you know I was in a band. I've always been in a band with jazz three guys. So I mean, J Jason's got the little picks. Uh, Phil makes fun of me all the time for using big picks, and uh, he, he even though he's the singer, he plays guitar and he likes uh, he likes a little jazz three picks and stuff. I I don't know if my hands are too big and weird, but they just feel tiny and I can't use them. So this has just been, I tried to read, Dunlop sent me like four different kinds of picks over the pandemic and I, once again, like guitars, tried them all, enjoyed them all, grabbed my pick that I'm used to. I was like, ah, that's what, that's what I'm used to. Makes sense. Yeah, stuck, yeah. old and stuck in my ways. Now for this tour, uh, what are you guys tuned to for a majority of the set or are you switching out? Every, because this is an anniversary tour, every, everything's in C-sharp standard, so awesome. we're playing the whole Fall of Ideals album, and then uh, we play a couple more songs after that, but uh, that, that happen to be in C-sharp, thankfully, makes things easier. But we do, our most recent two albums are in B standard, so <clears throat> the, one of the cool things about the Axe Effects, you know, you got that step down, it's got the, you can just click it, and instead of switching guitars, you just go down a step. And, it's pretty convenient. Yeah. And what string gauges are you using for that? Um, I recently just switched. I was using 12 to, f I used a custom set for the longest time. In this tour, I switched to the beefy bottom, the Ernie Balls. Okay. So it's got the, I believe it's 10, 13, 17 on the high. So you get the slinkier, uh, you know, high strings. And then it's uh, 42, uh, no, was it 32, 44, 54 on the bottom. So it's, I keep, that keeps the, uh, the rhythm stuff tight. And then, I don't know, I was just kind of getting sick of like, I know my hands were just kind of dying doing any kind of lead stuff with like the super stiff strings. I, I never tried the beefy bottom set, so I actually really like them and stuff. It's hard for me to switch, so I actually switched to something on this tour. I was proud of myself. <laughs> Heck yeah. So getting through the rest of the rig, you guys are running through Sennheiser Wireless into the Fractal system? Yeah, yeah. So amp-wise, um, in 2011, we were doing a European tour. I'd, I'd been with PV for a long time, and I... Uh, I got an EVH rental. They didn't have any PVs for me to rent in Europe because typically we don't drag all of our stuff over there. And I got a 5153 and I switched immediately. I've been in love with EVH 5153s forever. So yeah, once we started with the Axe FX stuff, since uh, Jason Richardson's Mr. Techie Tech guy over here, and we got, you know, we were more concerned with a light show on this tour. So the stage is like super clean and it's just lights. And uh, so yeah, running the 5153 red channel for, you know, Basically as usual, right. but just without like a wall of amps and stuff, you know? <laughs> so, and you've got quite the collection of EVH amps at home. Like you have like a bunch of the different models. Like do you have like a, a favorite or like what do you tend to use when you're at home? Well, I got, I, yeah, pretty much everything. I got the, uh, first, first of all, I got the old 5150 PV block letter, but then you got, <clears throat> I got the 5153, the, the first ones that came out. I have the EL34, I got the 50 watt Stealth. I just got the Iconic which I didn't even have a chance to take out of the box and try on this tour because everything was uh, so hectic leading up to the tour. So I'm actually looking forward to that. I haven't even tried it yet, but all the demos on YouTube I've seen have been amazing, so. We have one in the store. That looks really cool. But um, yeah, EVH has just been my thing for over 10 years now. So when we got the Axe FX, it was like, I want it to sound like my EVH, so. Yeah. It was absolutely. as simple as that. You know, max on overdrives typically just to kind of tighten up, you know, 808. But with Ma same thing with Maxon, I've been using them for the longest time. Yeah. So all the all the stuff that you could replicate with that is basically what we did. My rig has always been super simple. Yeah. I'm not smart enough to have that much stuff. <laughs> has it been like has it been like a good transition to running silent stage two and going into ears? Like, have you guys always run ears on tours or? Um, it's uh, I got my first set of ears in 2015. It was a little bit like pulling teeth for me. I liked just putting earplugs in and then having a, a monitor wedge on stage just blowing my face off with kick drum and guitar. Everybody else didn't like that so much. So it was just like, after, you know, people just be like, dude, get in-ear monitors. Everything's gonna be more consistent. I do, I do like them to an extent now, but uh, I have a little bit, I don't know, my ears are shaped weird and they don't seal like I want them to, so I have a hard time getting mixes that I want, but they're still, I mean, it's still better than like, the consistency is worth it. 
Yeah. And it's better than everybody else in the band being like, dude, I can't hear anything because your monitor wedge is blowing my face off. So. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Like for your lead tone as well, is it modeling like a different head or with effects? Yeah, just, just a USA lead mid gain. Um, I don't have a lot of guitar solos. So, you know, oh, I think this might be the first tour where like there's a different patch actually switching to my solos because I would usually just like go to the neck pickup or something. So, but we got the patch, he's got the patches programmed automatically and stuff. I don't have to switch to clean or anything like that. That's really cool. So I still kind of find myself walking to my pedal every time there needs to be a change. And I'm like, no, oh, yeah, I don't need to do that anymore. That's cool. So. What, what kind of cabs like are, have you used like in the past and like, you know, or have at home and or like are modeling in the, in the fractal? Are you like a Mesa guy or an EVH guy all the way? We did, we did have a Mesa cab and I really, I honestly don't even remember the model. It's still at the rehearsal space and we used it for God, probably 10 years. It's still there and still sounds awesome. I did use a lot of the EVH cabs, typically whatever came with that head you know, because I would get the whole set typically. But uh, as far as cab modeling and this goes, I have absolutely no idea. Going back to the fall of ideals, you know, back when you guys were in the studio working on that record, like what were some of the guitars that you guys were using, you know, on that record? God, 2006. Um, I was with Washburn then. Mm -hmm. I still have the same face eraser. Um, John from Shadows Fall was the first guy to ever help me out get my first... Uh, guitar endorsement. So I still have that same blonde fit. If you look back at any pictures from that touring cycle for actually probably for five or six years, that blonde washburn is, is the, the guitar I'm playing. So, I mean, I had that and uh, we had this magical 5150. It was a PV and we called it Zing Studios is where we recorded. And uh, we, we just called it the Zing 5150. It was this one PV and it sounded different from all the other ones. I don't even know who owned it, but we just tried to find a way to get that PV for every record because there was just something about it. And uh, God, I think we used that for like four albums or something like that. So yeah, it was, all that was still really simple too though. And so as far as like some of the riffs like during the set, like do you have a favorite riff like, you know, during the whole show that's just like defining for you? Yeah, I think there's a few of them. I mean, this, this Calling has been a song I've never gotten sick of playing live and uh, Six was the big Guitar Hero one and uh, I still kind of it just still feels kind of like it was yesterday. Me and El Ollie were sitting in El Paso, Texo, and like El Paso, Texo, um, El Paso, Texas, in 2005, and uh, we were playing some weird bullring on the sounds of the underground tour. And I remember, like, I was showing him the intro to Six, and then I showed him like the first 30 seconds of the song, and then he finished the song in like the next hour because that's kind of how we did things. I would show him like one piece, and then he was like, "Oh, cool! I have 12 more pieces to that now." And uh, yeah, so Six, this calling, I'm uh, not alone is one of my favorites. So. I mean, there's a lot of them. That, that, that whole album is filled with, I mean, most of my favorite roasts would probably be from that record, which is good because we're doing that tour right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Ollie, Ollie's playing, especially like you guys complimented each other so well and his, his writing techniques were incredible. Like that's, I think that's some of the things that make that record so special to me. Uh, it's just like the dual harmonies you have in like Not Alone yeah. and like the, the combination of heavy riffs, like, that was, like when you guys were writing that record, was it like a lot of in the room, like back and forth? Uh, back it was so simple back then because it was 2005 or six, you know, it was just, we had this tiny room at Phil's house, this tiny, tiny little room. It was the size of like a bathroom and uh, it was just really loud and we got the whole thing done in like six weeks. Ollie had so much material. And the thing that impressed me the most about him all the time was just like the, t he could do the technical stuff, but there was always stuff with taste, you know, tasteful stuff and feel. And that's the same exact thing I see, you know, first time playing with Jason, you know, Jason Richardson with the whole, you know, the tech stuff is like, it's impressive. But a lot of those guys, sometimes you're just like, ah, oh, they're not gonna play anything that like you can remember with any feel. And the fact that he can play like the stuff that nobody can play, but then also play something like, you can play one note and you'll feel it and it sounds, you know, it's, if you can balance that, I mean, I, that's the stuff I find that's the most impressive and Ollie did that. Jason does the same thing. That's awesome. Mike, thanks so much for coming out today and showing us your rig and your guitars. Uh, have a great time out on the rest of your tour. Uh, this is Dave Dunsire with Sweetwater Sound, signing out. You're thinking